we've got a couple minutes, yeah? Well, good morning. Welcome to Union Congregational Church, a church in the United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you're joining us in person in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week, we are very glad that you are with us today. Um, I, I want to say thank you to this church uh, because um, I just came back yesterday from a beautiful, wonderful, incredible uh, songwriters and pastors conference, um, and we talked a lot about um, the music that the church needs to be singing in these times and how uh, songwriters can be uh, contributing to that movement. And um, I have a lot that I'll, I'll share later, but I really, I literally need some time to process everything that I learned, and, um, and, and I'm going to see if there's a way to uh, bring, bring this to you in one way or another, because I think there's, uh, there are some things that I learned that you might be interested in also. Um, so I'm really, I'm really excited about that. But um, unfortunately, um, of all the things I brought back with me, as you can probably hear in my voice, unfortunately I brought a cold back as well. Um, so um, I tested yesterday. It's not COVID, so uh, don't be too afraid. But I'm also not going to be shaking hands today because I don't want to. I don't want to share that. Um, so uh, you're welcome. So um, <laughs> um, so um, I'm gonna. 
uh, as, as soon as this is over, I'm going to go home and rest. So um, if, you, um, if, you need, um, if you need anything pastorally, send me a note, and I will, um, I will uh, respond to you just as soon as I can. And I, uh, d- depending on how I feel, I may work, home, work from home tomorrow. So I'll um, uh, just um, watch Facebook, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, I know that Becky has a couple of announcements. Good morning. Uh, I have uh, several announcements. Um, the pumpkin carving is this Wednesday. We're starting at 5.30. Um, if you'd like to join the spaghetti supper beforehand and support the animal shelter, go right ahead. If you're not going to um, in, get involved in the spaghetti supper, please come in through the education wing rather than cut through their dinner. All right, we'll have that door open in the back. Um, the only thing I really need, uh, due to Jeff and Kathy Dukach, we have plenty of pumpkins, so thank you for that donation. Uh, but we could use some newspapers. I'm digging through and getting my weekly shopper or whatever it's called these days, and that's about all I have for newspapers. So if you're coming to decorate and you have a handful of newspapers at home, that would be great to cover the tables with. Um, the shoe drive is on its way and I already collected some so thank you for any gently used or new shoes they will be don't it'll be we'll collect those right up until our December 3rd Christmas program including the day of and um, those will be divided between the food pantry and reach Wapan Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that next week um, the it's the Sunday school kids are welcome. Actually, everyone is welcome to wear a costume if you'd like. If you've got a Halloween costume and you want to come in costume, you're more than welcome. And we're going to do a trick-or-treat for Reach Wapan this year. So we'll, we'll be collecting monetary donations uh, between the services. So we're asking the Sunday school kids to come early on that day at 9 o'clock so we can catch the 8.30 people. And... Um, We'll trick-or-treat for Reach Wapan uh, before the 9.30 service and then again after the 9.30 service. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Does anybody else have any other announcements to share this morning? Yeah. Come on up. Good morning. Um, I am just here to remind you on November 12th, uh, the missions is um, putting on a service Sunday. Uh, It's following the 930 worship service. And so we'll have a light lunch afterwards and we'll be doing some uh, mission projects uh, for for local uh, reach program. Uh, One of them is the mission backpack, which there is half sheets in the back. Uh, well, we, our goal is to fill 100 backpacks. Uh, these are backpacks that go home with the children, uh, about 30 to 50 of them a week with food in it for the weekend. Um, and so there's various items that go in each backpack. So if you want to pick up a half sheet, we're hoping to collect enough food um, by November 5th, whatever isn't uh, will hopefully purchase, but um, we're hoping for your contributions, whether it be monetary or the actual food items. Um, and then there'll be some other um, projects that we're going to be doing uh, during during that time. Uh, with the light lunch, if you're interested in providing any food items, reach out to uh, either myself, Heather, Kathy, Lori, Amy, or Rita, um, and to let you know what we are looking for. Um, but otherwise, we look forward to everyone joining us on November 12th. Thank you, Trisha. Anybody else today? Seeing none, uh, Heather, will you lead us in the call to worship? For those who are able, if you could stand to join us in the call to worship. You have found favor in my sight, says the Lord. I know you by name. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Please join me. We come before you today, O God, to worship you in your holy splendor. Our hearts tremble before you, 
mindful of your goodness and mercy. Show us your glory, we pray. Reveal your presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained now and for the journey to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now the opening hymn is found in um, the hymnal, number 56, Pring, uh, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. You may be seated. Becky is going to come and do children's time. I'm going to kind of stay back until, um, until the prayer time. How are you kids doing today? Good. Good. What's next week? Like the 31st? Uh, ice skating. You're going ice skating? Is there uh, something coming up? Halloween. Trick and treat. What do you say? What's Halloween. It? Halloween. Halloween. Do you guys dress up for Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. You all ready for it? Good. 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 Well, next week, we're going to do something different. Do you guys usually trick or treat for candy? Well, next week, we have some, we have these little cups that we're going to give you. And you're, you're welcome to bring your, you can wear your costumes to church next Sunday. I just had my birthday. 
It's not your birthday anymore? Or did you get a costume for your birthday? Oh, that sounds pretty cool. And that my little one. Oh, good. That's bigger than your little one. All right. So next week when you come, we're going to ask you to come early. If you can get here a little bit earlier. And we have the little containers. And you're going to go around and say, trick or treat for reach Wapan. Can you guys say that? Trick or treat for reach Wapan. Well, reach Wapan... We're like, what's that, right? Well, that's a group of people that help other people that need our help. They need our help maybe for food, maybe for shoes, maybe for clothes. So we're going, yeah. So we're going to collect money from all those really generous parents out there. <laughs> you already got some? Okay, good. And I'll bring some too to give to reach. And you're going to take the cup around before church, and then we're going to set them in the back, and you'll have Sunday school after children's time. And then after church for about 10 minutes or so, we'll do the same thing. And then we're going to take all those cups with all that money in it, and we're going to give it to the organization so they can buy food and maybe some clothing and maybe some shoes for kids that don't have it. Does that sound good? Awesome. Okay. Oh, your feet are getting bigger, and you need new shoes too. Oh, and those are in such good shape. And if your sister doesn't want to wear them, maybe the Reach Wapan kids can. Once you grow out of them. <laughs> All right, Pastor Jacob, will you lead us in prayer, please? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So as usual, I'm going to say a short phrase, and then uh, you can say it back to me. Dear God, thank you for helping us. Help others. Give us what we need so that we can give others what they need. Amen. Our scripture reading comes today from the, um, the first one comes from Exodus 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, look, you have been telling me, lead these people forward, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You've assured me, I know you by name, and I think highly of you. Now, if you think highly of me, show me your ways so that I may know you and so you may really approve of me. Remember, too, that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, I'll go by myself and I'll help you. Moses replied, If you won't go yourself, don't make us leave here, because how will anyone know that we have your special approval, both I and your people, unless you go with us? Only that distinguishes us me and your people from every other people on earth. The Lord said to Moses, I'll do exactly what you've asked because you have my special approval and I know you by name. Moses says, please show me your glorious presence. The Lord said, I'll make all my goodness pass in front of you and I'll proclaim before you, you the name, the Lord. I will be kind to whoever I wish and be kind and I will have compassion to whomever I wish to be compassionate. But the Lord said, you can't see my face because no one can see me and live. The Lord said, here is the place near me where you will stand beside the rock. As my glorious presence passes by, I'll set you in a gap in the rock and I'll cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I'll take away my hand and you will see my back but my face will, won't be visible. Our second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Thessalonians church that is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with you, or grace and peace to all of you. We always thank God for all 
of you when we mention your constantly in our prayers. This is because we remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Creator. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that God has chosen you. We know this because our good news didn't come to you in just a speech, but also with the power and the Holy Spirit with deep conviction. You know as well as we do what kind of people we were when we were with you, which was for your sake. We became imitators of us and the Lord when you accepted the message that came from the Holy Spirit with joy in spite of great suffering. As a result, you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. The news about your faithfulness to God has spread, so what we don't even need to mention it, so that we don't even need to mention it. People, tell us about what sort of welcome we had from you and how you turned God into idols. As a result, you are serving the living and true God, and you are waiting for God's Son from heaven. God's Son is Jesus, the one God raised from the dead and the one who will rescue us from the coming wrath. Here, the read here end the readings for the day. May God bless us, and may we learn from these holy words. Amen. Thank you, Heather. My friends, will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So part of the ordination process in the United Church of Christ is something called clinical pastoral education, or CPE. Um, it's a, where a student learns not only how to do pastoral care effectively, but also how their upbringing and uh, their emotional uh, processing uh, either helps or um, gives challenges to uh, their, their pastoral identity. And I'm not going to say anything more about that because my parents are here today, so I'm not going to say anything about my upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> because it was a good one. Um, <laughs> um, it's challenging, and it can be painful work at, at times, uh, but I also couldn't imagine being a pastor without having that experience. Um, as a student, you, you can be placed in s several different kinds of settings, and for me it was Aurora Medical Center in Oshkosh. I was there for a 12-week intensive training, and I was a chaplain intern at the hospital. That was my role. One of the things I learned very quickly about chaplaincy is that it's very different from pastoral ministry. Uh, in, in, a, in a hospital, you don't come to a hospital when you're having a good day, right? And so everybody, everybody there is dealing with some sort of crisis, uh, whether that is a, uh, some physical pain or, uh, or some, some emotional distress. Um, and, uh, and that's different in some ways from pastoral ministry because in pastoral ministry there's at least some level of variety. Uh, in a congregation, we do deal with crisis, but there's also there's also great joy and great wonderful, the wonderful things that happen also. So part of the job in pastoral ministry is sort of bouncing between those two things. Um, but um, my call at the moment that I'm going to tell you about is what was to be uncomfortable so that I could learn something. 
So one day at the hospital, I was preparing to go for a visit, which uh, made me kind of nervous. And I can't tell you about the reason I was visiting or who I was visiting because of HIPAA privacy laws. Um, but um, I, I remember asking my, uh, my supervising chaplain a question which is very similar to what Moses asked God in, in today's scripture text. So how am I going to know what to say, I asked, or how am I going to know what to do? And uh, my supervising chaplain, her name was Kelly, and she was a woman of very deep Catholic faith, and she said to me, even if you don't know what to say or what to do right now, just remember that God will be with you and that God will guide you in what you're supposed to say and what you're supposed to do. And remember, now is the time for you to make mistakes because you can learn from them and we'll ask, you can ask questions and we'll talk about them and you can learn how to be better. I made a few mistakes during that visit and the visit after that and the visit after that. And, uh, but I can honestly say that I'm a better pastor because of those experiences. A few weeks ago, we encountered the story of God uh, calling Moses through a burning bush. I talked about how Moses experienced uh, the feelings that he wasn't maybe good enough for his job and his proposition to God that God should choose someone else. Uh, but this time, even though, that God, even though Moses understands that he is the right person for the job, he feels nervous again because he realizes he doesn't have anybody to fall back on, at least not someone he can touch and see. Uh, and uh, this, is, this, this reading actually basically finds Moses saying, hey, God, you told me that you would send someone along with me to help these people get out of their oppression, and you haven't told me who that is yet. What gives? Have you forgotten or something? And as I think about our two texts for today, one thing that strikes me is that even leaders need leaders. People like Moses are expected to accompany people out of their trauma, out of their fear, out of their anger, and out of their betrayal. And that is exhausting work. People like Moses need to be comforted and guided too. But that comfort and guidance can't come from the people that Moses is with because uh, it's his job to care for them. It's not their job to care for him. They have their own trauma that they're dealing with and they can't be responsible for Moses' well-being. So even as not all of us are leaders in the church specifically, I think that a lot of us can relate to uh, this feeling in some form. Uh, so many people in our congregation have been teachers. Many people in our congregation have, been, uh, have worked in the correctional industry. Heck, many of, many of us in our congregation have been parents and grandparents and um, other people um, that, are, that have the sacred responsibility of caring for somebody in our lives. And uh, sometimes the work that we do is really difficult and really complicated, and, some, and, and uh, there's not a what, you're, what, you, what to expect when you're expecting for every uh, every thing that we do, right? There's no rule book for, for uh, how to do all the things that we do. And um, even as you have to display confidence, you need to be uh, reassured that you're going to be okay just as much, just as God, uh, as you follow what God is asking you to do. So that's, that reassurance is exactly what God gives to Moses. 
God affirms to Moses that he has God's special approval. And in other translations, uh, this is written as Moses having God's favor. Words that we often hear at Advent when the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she has found favor with God, right? These, these, these words can uh, trace back to, back to that. And this means that God will do what God promises and carry Moses through and help Moses do the sacred and special task that God has assigned to Moses. And our text from 1 Thessalonians adds another layer to this. The, writer, the writers of this letter to the Thessalonians remind them that God has chosen them for a special purpose, and that God doesn't bestow the Holy Spirit on just anybody. And they say, we know this because our good news didn't come to you just in speech, but also with the power of the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. As God accompanied Moses as he led his people out of Egypt, and as God gives special instructions and special gifts of the Spirit to the Thessalonians, God also accompanies us as we share the love of God and our words and actions. That is our good news for today. That's what I want you to take away from today. Now this can be good news for us as we tackle the difficult challenges facing our community here in Waupun and Beaver Dam and other places. As we endeavor to be a refuge to those who are questioning their identity or even their faith, this can be good news. As we prepare to address the needs of people experiencing homelessness and food insecurity and poverty right here in our backyard, we can have the assurance that God will be with us. This isn't easy work. Perhaps the people we encounter will have hard stories. Perhaps the people we encounter will feel that in this land of opportunity that we call the United States of America, that they haven't gotten a fair shake because of who they are. Perhaps people will be fleeing unsafe situations. And we need to be compassionate and caring and trauma-informed in our work with them. And somehow, by the grace of God, they will find us and ask us to help them and to come alongside them. And it's a gift and a sacred responsibility. And we don't have to have all the answers or wonder whether we say the right things because that will all work itself out. My friends, God will be with us as we minister to our community. Just like God was with me and other people before me and after me, and just like God is with you when you deal with um, people in, in, in your own ways, whether that is uh, someone in your family, whether that's health care, whether that is... Uh, corrections or teaching or you know any of the any of the ways that you all are already leading and loving and learning and liberating so as you go into this week may you know that god calls you by name to share love and compassion and courage and may you know that in doing that work that you are not alone that God is with you, and that you have found favor with God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is number 429, If You Will Trust in God to Guide You.
Thank you. You may be seated. Hmm. We now come to a time where we uh, come into a time of more intentional prayer. Let's, uh, let's take some time for silent prayer, and then, uh, and then we'll ask for intercessions. So I have a couple of prayer requests that I'm aware of um, as Alana gets ready to come around with a microphone. Uh, So I got kind of an urgent text from Chrissy Whitehouse this morning, um, and she says, Matt, a friend of her family, was injured yesterday and broke his neck in two places. Um, So if I say, God, in your mercy, will you say, receive our prayer for Matt, God, in your mercy? Receive our prayer. And um, I have an update on my friend, little Ben Abendroth. Um, he is, he's the three-year-old who uh, has cancer and um, n- desperately needed a new liver. He got a, he got a liver transplant um, a few days ago, and all went well, um, although now he, um, they... They extubated him, and he was uncomfortable, so he, uh, he's now been re-intubated. Um, and so uh, continuing prayers for, for Ben, for his brother Caleb, for his sister Lily, and his parents Nicole and Ryan are, are uh, welcomed. Uh, for, for all of them, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. <clears throat> what other prayers do we bring this morning? Looks like a light prayer day today. Did you find anything on Zoom? For peace and warring nations. Yes. Yes, indeed. God in your mercy. Seeing no other prayers, let's, let's enter into a time of prayer. God, in your grace, you have reminded us that you are with us at every turn, every every step on the journey, every wind in the road. We give you thanks for gathering us together today in this place and and on Zoom as we continue to be reminded of that love. We ask for your love in a special way to surround uh, Matt and Ben and Ben's family as they deal with their medical circumstances. We ask for your spirit of peace that passes all understanding to be with those who are in conflict and war in Israel and Palestine and Ukraine and other places, that your peace would live among them and in their hearts. We ask you to be with all of those who are facing homelessness, food insecurity, poverty, and discrimination right in our backyard. We ask that you would tear down the walls of exclusion and persecution in all its forms. We ask all of these things in the name of your son Jesus, who was the light of the world 
and who gives us the best example we have and teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now comes the time where we uh, offer our gifts back to God. Here at Union Congregational Church, we give thanks for every gift that is brought, uh, whether through time, talent, treasure, or prayer. Please give generously in whatever way you can. Exology. Join me in the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, you have promised to be with us when we do hard things. We know that some of the gifts we give today will benefit people who are going through hard things. As we dedicate these gifts of time, talent, and treasure, we ask you to empower us to support those in need. Help us give strength to the needy and hope to the hopeless through our offerings. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 748, Lord Dismiss Us With Your Blessing.
my friends, receive these words of benediction. When Moses was feeling anxious about the work before him, he asked God for a sign. Moses wanted to see God's glory. God passed by him, saying, I know you by name and think highly of you. I will be kind to whomever I wish to be kind and will have compassion to whomever I wish to be compassionate. Look for God's glory this week, aware that God's grace and mercy may be resting with people you least expect. God knows you by name, and may God's presence go with you as you and give you rest. And now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.